Hi there, this is Cuso again and welcome to the second part of these tutorials about formal string exploitation. In the first tutorial we've looked at what formal strings are and how they can be exploited for information leakage. We saw in particular how to leak uh, values of the stack that we were not supposed to be able to look at and we saw the implication of that, the impl implication being that you can leak, for example, the value of a canary, so if you've got, say, a buffer overflow coupled with a format string uh, vulnerability, you can leak the canary and then you can quickly and easily repair it and still be able to exploit the program. Uh, we also mentioned that the values we leak off the stack, they can be addresses in memory and so they can help us uh, figure out the layout of a program in memory even when ASLR is running. So an information leakage vulnerability can effectively be used to bypass also ASLR. In this video we will move a little bit, we will go a little bit deeper into format strings and we will look at the feature of former strings uh, that allows us to not only read values of the stack but also to perform arbitrary writes in memory and this is going to be uh, the key feature we are going to leverage to achieve full exploitation with just a single format string vulnerability without relying on other vulnerabilities so Let's take a look again at the main page for printf and if we scroll down we see that there is a section about conversion specifiers and we find here stuff like %d that we've already looked at, uh, u, x and other stuff as well and if we scroll down a little bit here it is n, percent %n, let's read the description very quickly. The number of characters written so far is stored into the integer indicated by the pointer argument. So as I was mentioning before all these other format specifiers we looked at %d, %x, they are read-only specifiers. They basically go into memory, fetch stuff from memory and print it to the screen in some kind of representation. However, this one is actually used to go into memory, taking the next argument of the stack and using that argument as a pointer, as it says here, pointer argument, and it writes to that argument the number of characters written so far. So as you can see, this is the key point because now we have turned an information leakage vulnerability in a potential tool to actually modify memory. If we can modify memory, as we will see uh, in a little bit, we can start looking for pointers that we can actually redirect to our shell code, thus hijacking the program execution flow. Let's take a look again at the FMN FNT program that we saw before AAA percent X actually let's say percent for backslash dollar X so we saw that by using using direct parameter access we can actually access this input that's been copied on the stack let's open the program from within the debugger and let's see what happens if instead of specifying X we specify percent N so we're going to say run and then instead of X we say N enter program received segmentation fault so what's happening here let's take a look at the instruction the crash that determined the crash so <coughs> I'm going to say X slash I and I'm going to dump basically the next the instruction that the instruction pointer is uh, pointing at in the 
this moment and as you can see this is a move instruction uh, we are moving a value from edx to the eax to the memory location pointed uh, to by ED, uh, eax let's take a look at this value so i'm going to say p which stays which stands for print and i'm going to print as hexadecimal values both the content of the edx register and the eax register so look at this eax now contains 41 41 41 so we are now and this instruction is actually moving the value 4 which is contained in edx into 41 41 41 now we've got a crash because of course this is not a valid address let's go back a second and let's try to understand where this address comes from if we go up here so when we use x what's happening is that printf is going off the stack fetching the fourth argument and that happens to be 41 41 if instead of x we specify n it's going to go and fetch this argument which is then going to be used as a pointer to write to that memory location again what are we writing to that memory location the number of characters that the function has print or so far in this case it's five and we can actually verify this quite quickly one two three and four and then the dash so it's actually five characters uh, let's kill the program a second and run it again now this time i'm gonna add b b b b here and we've got the crash again and i'm gonna go into the um, i'm gonna print sorry the content of the edx register and this time it's nine and that's what we were expecting because again we added some we added four characters to the output of the function now something to mention here which we're gonna use later we are gonna we will need to de to exactly determine this value here and we can do it quite easily by using the width specifier of any uh, percent parameter so if I say percent 10 u what this is doing let's run it again and if we look at edx now we've got the value f which as you know in decimal is 15 in fact we've got this which occupies at least 10 characters and then we've got four the four a's and the dash which is a five so again if now i change 10 to 11 and i print the content of edx we've got 16. so we can actually decide we can actually decide the location of memory we want to write to and we can determine the value that we're going to write to that location by changing by using these width parameters thus determining how many characters we're writing on the screen let me mention something else before before we move on so what happens let me just put 10 again here what happens if i add some garbage here is the number we are writing to this memory location going to change let's try i'm going to print edx and the number stays f 16 characters so again if i run it again and i add stuff here and i run it again edx stays the same so what the, the point i want to make here is that percent n is going to write to the memory location to the pointer it fetches of the stack the number of characters written so far so it's gonna just count these characters here and it's not gonna take care of whatever comes afterwards so to sum up this first this first point using the percent and 
specifier, we have actually achieved or realized a right what were primitive, which means we can decide what we want to write, and we saw it by changing this value and adding uh, bytes to the output stream. So we can decide the value we want to write using width arguments, and then we can provide the address we want to write to. In this case, we provided A's, but if we substitute A's with something else, uh, with, a mem with a valid memory address, we're not gonna have a segmentation fault, but the program is actually gonna write the value we want to that memory location. And that's what we're gonna do in a second. Okay, let me drop out of GDB for a second, because we're gonna talk about the global offset table. Let's run obj dump minus r on the FMT program. And this actually prints the global offset table for the FMT program. Now, in a few words, the uh, as you probably know, when you compile a program, you use functions from external libraries, for example, from libc. In this case, the program is using printf, string copy, and other functions. Now, how does the program know at runtime where these functions are located in memory? Well, there is a structure, again, that you're looking at right now, called the global offset table. Now, this structure contains an entry for each of the functions the program needs to use. And this is populated at runtime. So when the program runs, this table is populated. And for example, if we take the string copy entry, when the program wants to call string copy, it reads, it goes into the global offset table, gets the entry for string copy, and this is gonna contain a pointer to the actual location of the function in memory. So as you can see, why is this interesting for us? Because again, it's a table of pointers and we saw before that we are in a, with the former string vulnerability, by using the percent and specifier, we can actually modify any location of memory. So if we can actually, if we can modify an entry in the global offset table to point to our shared code, when the program tries and call the one of those functions, it will actually jump to our shared code. Let me, let me be more, more clear. Let's open in GDB, GDB minus q FNT, and I'm gonna disassemble this as main. So this is our printf function. After we call this function, the program is calling the put char function. Now, it is not calling it directly. As I said before, it's going into this table and it's saying, mm, okay, this entry here, this address holds the actual address of put char in memory. So if we can modify this entry and point it to our shell code, when the program tries to call put char, it will actually call our shell code. That's quite easy. So let's try, uh, let's try to do this. So I'm gonna run the program, and you remember before we said AAA, which were our 41, 41, 41, 41 that we were fetching as the fourth argument of the stack. Now we're changing that, and we're actually providing the actual address of the put chart entry in the global offset table. And as you probably as you probably know, we need to put this in in the bytes that compose the address. We need to put in put them in, in reverse order because this is a little and Indian machine. So we have done 08, 04, now we've got 97, 38, 97, 38 and now we can say percent for backslash dollar n and if we run the program like this 
as you can see we get a segmentation fault which is what we were expecting because now the program has tried to jump to this location here which is the number five and the number five is again the we've written this number to this location using the format string so again just to convince ourselves that we can now control this entry here I'm gonna say percent 10 u for example this is gonna of course cause printf to print more characters thus this value will increase let's run it again yes and it becomes 10 uh, hexadecimal which is what uh, we were expecting now just to confirm that we are actually overwriting the entry for the put char the global offset table entry for put char I'm just gonna put in the address 97 38 and as you can see this contains actually global offset table put char and it contains 10 so now what we want to do to gain control of this program we want to take our shell code put it in the memory in the virtual address space of the program and then change this value here so that it points to the global offset table now there are many many ways we can uh, provide our our shell code and I've prepared here a uh, simple environment variable that I'm gonna export in the environment egg equals then we've got 64 bytes of knob sled and then we've got a very simple shell code to spawn a root shell and let's um, let's open sorry let's open again f and t and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get my payload from the previous run I'm gonna play it again and I'm gonna make the program crash but this time I'm gonna look into the memory and see where my knob sled is so basically what I'm doing I'm starting from the top of the stack and I'm looking for 90 90 90 90 and here we find the location of 90 90 90 of course this is our knob sled let's take one of these addresses for example this this one and let's examine it let's examine 10 instructions starting from this address and as you can see nop 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 and then the shell code starts here and you will probably also recognize that this is zeroing out some registers to perform uh, subsequent um, system calls so this value over here this is the value we want to write into the put char entry for the global offset table so how are we gonna write that value we need a little bit of math here and I'm gonna I'm gonna get the calculator a second this is gonna be our best friend in this in this phase of the exploitation so let's let's run this again so far we are writing 10 hexadecimal but we actually want to write all this value here we're gonna split these into two parts so we're first gonna write f6 5e and then we're gonna write pfff uh, how do we get this value here so we are already getting a 10 hexadecimal right but we want to get f65e so we subtract what we are already getting and we get this value that in decimal is 63054 I'm gonna copy the value go here and instead of 10 placing this value here so again what are we doing here by specifying this width we are changing the amount of uh, characters printf is writing and by changing the amount of characters printf is writing we are of course also changing what this percent and specifier is gonna write 
let's give it a try and pretty close pretty close we are writing f6 5 4 and we need to to add something to this I'm going to be very lazy and actually use the uh, the calculator to determine uh, the value but of course this is the value we want to write this is the value we're writing so it's pretty easy that we want 10 characters we want to add 10 characters actually I made a mistake before and removed them I'm gonna say instead of 54 64 so we are we're adding 10 and if we run it the lower part of the address is sorted out quite well. Now we need to take care of this part over here. To do so we are going to modify this format string in this way. I'm gonna put on the stack again the address 0804 97 but this time I am instead of 38 I'm gonna put 3a so what is 3a? 3a is now the address where this is starting because this was uh, 3.8, so 3.9, 3a. So now from here what we're going to write, we're going to modify the higher order bytes of this address. So this is just, so this is just placing it on the stack. Now what we need to do, we need to fetch it off the stack like we did for this value and write there. Thus we need to provide another percent, this time 5, because if this is the fourth argument of the stack, this is going to be of course the fifth argument. Uh, and here we are, like this. Now look what happens if we run it. let's discuss this value this is not quite what we wanted but it's it's very close now the first thing to notice is that the value here which was f65e is now changed changed why is it changed because we've added four bytes here so you remember this is going to write the amount of characters that have been printed so far and we've added four bytes so we need basically to remove four bytes from here so instead of 64 we say 60 we run it again and we repair this value now as far as this other value is concerned let's take a look at our format string so actually let's take a look at this value as you as you can probably see this is the same number plus one. This is F65E plus one because up until here we had F65E, then we added a dash and then we used percent n again. So it's just increased it by one. If we want to change that number, we need to work a little bit more and add some more uh, characters so that we can get that to evaluate to BFFF which is our final goal. So let's say if we let's see if we can if we can do it. So BFFF is what we want to write and F565E is what we've written so far, right? So if we subtract these two values, we know how many bytes we need to add to get to BFFF. However, we get a negative value, as you can see. So we need to use a little trick, and instead of writing BFF, we're going to write 1 BFFF, which is a much larger value. So now our uh, subtraction is going to work fine. Let's convert this value to decimal. 51617, and let's copy it here and see what happens. Uh, haven't quite haven't quite copied it correctly uh, let me go to the calculator and let's paste it here 
it's not gonna work but it's gonna be very close to what we need yes please run it again okay so C001 so we are basically we wanted to write BFFF this is very very close to what we needed and if you do if you are lazy I mean it should be it should be quite clear but let's do it in the calculator so we are writing C001 and we actually wanted BFFF so the difference is two characters so we are just writing two characters more than we need so we can take 17 and we can turn it into 15 and run it yes please run it again and ho oh, ho look at this now the program hasn't crashed and if we look at the processes that are running we can see that SH has been uh, has been created does the exploit worked inside the uh, debugger let's see if we can get it to work from outside the debugger I'm gonna copy the payload I'm gonna quit the debugger like this and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go out drop out of root so now I am a regular user and I forgot to mention it before but as you can see the FMT program is a set to the program owned by root thus again after we exploit it if we run a shell we should have a root shell so let's confirm this f mt and then we put our python payload and we get bash who am i and here we are root finally got root so let's wrap up a little bit it was uh, quite long uh, maybe a bit confusing if that's the first time you've looked at a format string vulnerability that's probably gonna be uh, confusing and it's okay the steps we've followed are though very very simple we started from a simple information leakage and we saw how to reach values uh, of the stack using a format string vulnerability and in particular we looked at direct parameter access which makes exploitation much easier because it allows us to directly fetch the parameter we want and usually these are the parameters we control on the stack then we saw how to use the percent and specifier to write into memory and we saw how we can influence the amount of uh, characters printf or fprintf or any format function is writing by using the width parameters in between percent and the conversion specifiers so we had stuff like percent 10 u and stuff like that the only purpose of those uh, parameters or of the width parameters was to actually increase the amount of bytes we are writing uh, then we saw how to use like the calculator to do basic calculations to get our values right so that we can overwrite memory locations with whatever we want and then we saw what the global offset table is and we chose an entry in the global offset table and we overwrote that entry into two steps so we first overwrote the least two significant bytes and then we went for the to more signi most significant uh, bytes and that allowed us to gain control over the instruction pointer which was our final aim so that we pointed the instruction pointer to our shell code that in this case we placed um, in the in the environment as a uh, egg variable so this was just an introduction uh, we had to disable uh, some uh, mitigation techniques 
for for exploitation to be for the exploitation to be successful we didn't run ASLR and uh, this particular version of uh, Fedora Fedora 16 uh, I installed it from the 32-bit uh, uh, live CD and it ships with a kernel that does not support um, the DEP or NX like it's called uh, more often. It doesn't support non-executable stack and non-executable heap thus we didn't have to deal uh, with this mitigation technique. So the next step if you want to try would be to defeat ASLR and defeat uh, the uh, DEP or non-executable stack uh, protection. Okay we're done and thank you for watching this video.